I want to talk to you about the fact that you were created by God. You were created by who? God. How many have known that forever? How many of you said, Dave, you're not telling me anything new? Okay, all right. We got a lot of smart people here. But here's something you've got to realize when it comes to God. You were not just created by God to live and breathe and walk about like a little zombie, to play your games, Snapchat all day, Xbox, whatever you do. You were made for more than that. You were created by God for more than that. Breathe in with me. Breathe out. There's a reason that you're breathing right now. You're alive because God created you for some very special things. Look at this, all right? I know in Genesis 1, 27, it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, he created them. And God saw everything that he made. Behold, it was very good. Say it with me. It was very what? Good. Say it like you mean it. Good. God never does anything in a way that's bad. You say, well, I've seen some bad looking people. Well, God created them just the way they are. That's the way God wanted them to be. When I was created, I had a half inch gap right here. I literally could put a pencil between my teeth. <laughs> that ain't nice, y'all are laughing. Listen, I had a lot of kids laugh at me. When I was 14 years old, my hair started falling off. Falling off, falling out, it fell off too. But I was going bald, I had a half inch gap. I mean, I had the body of a god, I can't help that. Look at these arms, but no, not really, I had, I was a fat kid, it was really bad. So here I am with no hair hardly, big gap in my teeth, wasn't very healthy, wasn't eating healthy, and people didn't treat me the greatest. Huh. Look, Dave's laughing at me. Yeah, Dave, I just described you. <laughs> but listen, shh, sit up straight, listen, shh, shh, shh. The gap is gone, yes, it's gone. But here's something that I want you to understand. God created me that way regardless. Yeah, I got braces and things happened. It was really good. Here's what I want you to understand. God created you for two specific reasons. One, he created you to know him. And two, to serve him. Let me illustrate this way. Years and years ago, years and years ago, when they would build, they decided to put a nail in by using this. What is this? Yes. They were building and they just didn't have any other way to do it. So years and years and years ago, I'm talking over 2,000 years ago, they started using a rock. Now, can you use a rock to put a nail in? Yes. Is it very effective? No. So this guy decided hundreds of years ago, a couple of thousand years ago, I just don't think that's a good idea. This guy was really creative. He was a creator. And in his mind, he had an idea. His idea was this. What is this? And before he ever made the hammer, he already had it in his brain what he was going to do. He said, this doesn't work because this isn't good. This is good. Not only good, it's very good. So he decided to make the hammer. And when he made the hammer, everything changed. Now, the thing about the hammer is this. It was made by a creator. God is your creator. God is your what? There's nobody here by chance. You didn't just exist by chance. God created you. God had a purpose for you to be here before you even went, wah. That's what babies do, wah. Before you were even born, just like the guy that said, no longer we're going to use a, a rock, we're going to use a what? Yeah. He had it in here, and then he created it, and it was very good. Now, here's something very important for you to understand. Just like the creator of the hammer had a plan to create the hammer, God had a plan to create you. He makes no mistakes. He has a reason and purpose for you to be here. And the first thing is for you to know him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. God says, don't fig try to figure things out on your own. Just trust me, believe in me. Believe. To know God is to believe in God. If you don't believe in God, you just acknowledge him up here. You will never go to heaven if you just think on God, acknowledge there's a God, but never believe in your heart in God. There's a lot of people who say, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, I'm a Christian. But you act like a Christian by saying things, but you don't live like a Christian. I've used this a long time ago. 
I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try. What is that? Are you sure? Looks like a bubble, right? Floats like a bubble. Don't know if it smells like a bubble. They're floating. They look good. They're shiny. They're pretty. Man, don't they make you happy? Is it a bubble? Yeah. Let's get a bunch of them. Never go to Dollar General to buy bubbles. <laughs> I'm going to set the this bubbles. Bubble. Did I just catch a bubble? I think I did. So let me get this straight. Is this a bubble or is this a bubble? This is a bubble. And I'll tell you why this is a bubble. Shh. Some of you all are going to be like, that's a marble. That's not a bubble. That's just a marble. Just quit raining on my parade. Shh. It's a marble. No, this is a bubble. Just go along with me. Here's my point. Some people go through life floating around like, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm with the VBS. I go to church. I, I do all kinds of stuff. I'm a nice person. I'm a nice person. They're just floating around. But in reality, you're fake. You up here know there's a God, but you never believed in God. God created you not just to acknowledge him, but to believe in him with your heart. That's salvation. For with the heart, men and women, everybody that wants to believes. With the heart unto salvation. And with the mouth, confession is made. Now, I may have done that a little backwards, that verse, but here's the point. You speak with your mouth the prayer of salvation. God, I believe in you. I not only acknowledge you, but I accept you in my heart. And I want you in my life. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus is the son of God, and I want you in my life. I believe with all of my heart. I don't just acknowledge you here. I believe in you right here. Because God created you to know him, and to truly know God means you believe in him with your heart. And then, when you trust God with your heart, then you start serving God. You see, the hammer by itself can be dangerous. It's got a sharp edge here. <laughs> it's got this hard part here. It's worthless on its own. But when it's in the hand of the creator, it can do amazing things. It's designed by the creator to put a nail in, to take a nail out. Every part of it is uniquely designed by God. All of it was uniquely designed by God to serve him. The master, you were created to know God and to serve God because you were designed by God. Now let me make this very, very, very easy for you to understand. Some of us in here know God here, but not here. And there's some in here that know God here in here and you've trusted Jesus and you're a Christian. That's wonderful. But if you haven't, today you need to. You need to accept Jesus. He wants to know you just as much as you ought to know him. He wants to be a part of your life. But if you are a Christian, and you're like that hammer, and you're just laying around doing nothing, then you need to start serving the master. You were designed by the master to do wonderful things. Nobody in here is the same. Nobody's the same. How many of you are boys? Raise your hand. How many of you are girls? Raise your hand. You're different. No matter what anybody tells you, whatever you want to convince yourself, is there a difference between, a, between a, 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 let, let's say, a dog and a cat? Is there a difference between the two? Yes. yes! I got a dog. He's huge. His name is Hank. And I don't have a cat because they're nasty. Yes. But there's a difference. And let me tell you something. God made the dog different than the cat. And no matter if big old Hank, my great Dane, says, <gasps> and in dog language, that means I want to be a cat, I would have to look at Hank and say, you can't, Hank. You were created to be a beautiful dog. And cats are nasty. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Never make a mock out of the creator because when you make a mock out of the creator and say, no, I wasn't created to do this. I was created to do this. Wait, is that what drills are made to do? No, drills are made to take a screw and do this. You know why? Because this is designed different than this. The designer of this had a purpose for this and the designer of this had a different purpose. We can't mix them up. It don't work that way. They're not effective that way. God created you to know him, to serve him, because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully means 
You have purpose. Wonderful means you're unique. You are so unique. Hey, do you guys realize that you as an individual, as a person, are so unique that your DNA is completely different from everybody else? Your, your, the cells in your body, if you were to stack them all up, how unique they are, they could go all the way to the moon and back. That's how great you are. And your DNA makes you who you are. Your eye color, if you have hair, your hair color, the features of your nose, your, your skin tones, everything. God made you that way. He said, there's nobody else like you. And don't try to mess that up. You say, I'm so depressed. I hate who I am. I don't like who I am. Stop saying that. Because the creator made you who you are. You have design. You are designed by God with a purpose and a uniqueness that is so beautiful and wonderful. Don't deny it. Embrace it. Just like this. The hammer. And when you know the creator God and you start serving him, you change the world. You know why? Because people started catching on. Hey, this, this ain't no good. This, we can get a lot done with this. We could build a lot of stuff and get it done. Because when you do what God created you to do, everything changes. People's lives are better. Some of you can play basketball and some of you can't. Some of you can sing and some of you can't. Some of you can play instruments and some of you can't. Some of you know how to dance and some of you don't. Some of you really don't and you think you do. Some of you can rap and some of you cannot rap. Bro, it's just true. And the fact of the matter is, that's okay. Because you were designed to do what you were made to do for God. But here's the thing. Some of you feel like, why would God want to use me? Because he loves you. He wants you huh, to know he loves you. You say, I already know that, Pastor Dave. Do you really know that? Because he loves you in a way nobody else will love you. Say, so my mom loves me, not like God loves you. My dad loves me, not like God loves you. Nobody can love you to the extent God loves you. He loves you so much, it doesn't matter how bad you are or what you've done, God will forgive you of that. We don't love like God loves. God says, I'm your creator. I loved you. I made you to know me, to serve me, because you are made with design. And design means you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And that just simply means you have purpose and you're unique. And you're beautiful. And I love you. I love you. The guy that made the hammer says, man, I love this because it is good. And God says the same about you. So if you don't know God, I think you need to because he loves you. I don't know how to love you like God loves you. Years ago, I worked at Chick-fil-A. Do you like Chick-fil-A? Raise your hand. Yeah. If you don't like Chick-fil-A, we forgive you. But when I was working at Chick-fil-A in the mall, I saw all kinds of weird people. Yeah, I just saw all kinds of people that I thought were weird. And one day, this guy comes in, and I'm thinking to myself, man, you look strange. And I wasn't a very nice guy back then. I actually was thinking to myself, I'm going to tell you, you look strange. When you walk up to this register, I'm going to let you know you look strange. Because he had a mohawk, he had makeup on, he had that weird thing. He just looked strange. And it bothered me because it wasn't me. I didn't like the way he was, even though I have no hair at all. So I thought to myself, I should let him know. Somebody's got to let this guy know, you look like a weirdo. But that wasn't right of me. I didn't know love. And then a little girl was standing there and she started laughing. And the mom says, I'm so sorry. She's laughing. She's not from around here. We adopted her. He said, that's okay. I, people laugh at me all the time. And the little girl said something in her language because she was adopted from another country. Her mom says, hey, my daughter just said that she thinks you're beautiful. And he started crying. And I'm listening to this while I'm at the register giving away Chick-fil-A sandwiches. He said, you're beautiful. And he cried. He said, nobody's ever told me that before. Now, some of you in here have heard that story. And maybe you forgot that story. But that story sticks with me forever. And if you heard that story, I wanted you to hear it again because this one reason. That guy, regardless of what he looks like, is loved by God, was created by God. And only God can love him the same way. Not like his mom. Only God can love him in such a way that 
makes him feel like he was created for a purpose and a reason. So he came up to the register, and I'm really upset at this time. I'm thinking, oh man, I'm a horrible person. The little girl just said you were beautiful, and I'm saying you're awful, and I'm feeling so bad. And I kept these little things called tracks underneath the counter. They're just ways to tell people about Jesus on a piece of paper. So I reached in and I put it in his bag and I gave it to him. I may even said to him, would you read this? And I think I did. He was so nice and he took it and he went his way. I don't know what ever happened, but I do know this. In that little piece of paper, it told him that God loved him just the way he is.